Hello YouTube, this is Jim again. Here you can see my stash of Sisu or Indian Rosewood bowl blanks. I had a customer who wanted a very large bowl, as big as I could make it, out of this wood for a fruit bowl. So I had to dig down through that pile and find this nice piece here. I acquired all these bull blanks from a friend of mine who was having two of these trees taken down in his yard as the uh, sisu tree is extremely invasive and will destroy concrete patios and pools and decks and that kind of thing. I picked this piece because it was one of the biggest blanks I had and I could see that there was some nice figure in the cut side that would most likely make it into the bowl. Here I'm knocking the corners off of the blank. This wood is extremely hard and the bowl's big, so I didn't want to spend 14 years working the corners down to get to the bowl shape. It was hard enough as it was, so uh, this saved me quite a bit of time. Since this is gonna be a live edge bowl, I'm putting a recess here for my force bird drive center and that will allow me to make adjustments during the turning to get the wings lined up properly. I was able to get it mounted between centers and turned out to be fairly well balanced so I think I started turning at around 400 rpm or so which is pretty good for a blank this size. So I'm going to start working on the corner here to try and get the balance and at the same time start on the shape of the bowl. I'm using my three quarter inch Carter and Sons wood beater, which is an amazing tool, especially for a blank that's this massive. It took me quite a while to get the bowl rounded out. Even with the Carter and Sons tool I was using and the amazing steel they have, I had to sharpen quite a few times before I was uh, done with the outside of this. The turning was going pretty well at this point. It's getting pretty close to round and the shape is coming along, but I needed to readjust the position of the tailstock to get the wings equalized. So I stop here to do that and kind of check the progress. Getting really close to my final shape at this point and I can see that there's a little bit of tear out along the top edge of the bowl uh, so I may need to come down from that direction to clean that up a little bit. I can also see a little bit of figure coming through that I saw on the raw blank so I was pretty happy with that. Here you can see I'm working on the foot or the shoulder and the tenon so that I can turn it around and hollow the inside. I use the techniques I learned from watching videos by the Kent from Turner Wood Bowl. I'll link his channel in the description. I basically learned how to turn just by watching his videos. Uh, he's really, really good at explaining things.
Finally able to turn the speed of the lathe up a little bit. I think this makes it about 680 RPM. I don't have a full variable speed lathe, so I have to change the belts, but it was really nice to be able to turn fast at this point. Pretty happy with the shape of the bowl at this point, so I'm just going to do a little shear scraping to clean up some of the tool marks and kind of blend everything together and refine it before I sand. Here I'm using this ring light right up next to the surface of the bowl while I sand so it will highlight any ridges that are left. I had to do a significant amount of hand sanding of the wings because uh, I was just getting beat up by the rotation when I tried to do it when it was spinning so it took quite a while. Uh, I forgot to turn my camera on for this but I put a coat of shellac based sanding sealer on and then used axe abrasive paste and axe polishing paste to get the finish that you see there. And about ready to flip it around and start hollowing out. Normally I rotate the headstock to do the hollowing, but it's still a little bit out of balance at this point, so I'm going to take out some of the center mass while the tailstock is still engaged for a little bit more support, and then once I kind of get it a little bit balanced out, then I'll rotate the headstock and continue hollowing. About got to the final bowl thickness I want here and before I remove more mass from the center I'm going to clean up those upper wings because once I go further down they're going to start to flex and I won't be able to hit them and get clean cuts anymore. The bowl is going to be used as a fruit bowl so I wanted to make sure the thickness was enough to stand up to everyday use. So I'm starting to get my tool a little bit far off of my tool rest. So I have several different rests and I was really struggling with the size and shape of this bowl to get the proper support through the cuts that I wanted. So you'll see me swapping back and forth here a few times just to try and get things stable. As I get towards the end of the hollowing process, I see all this beautiful grain that I'm just turning into shavings. And so I since then purchased a bowl coring jig from Woodcut Tools. And that allows me to utilize more of the wood and get more bowls out of a single blank. And in future videos, I'll be showing some of that stuff and the things I've learned and how it works out. You can really start to see here some of the color variation that's present in this wood. There's the light sap wood and the darker kind of caramel 
stripes and when you get towards the bottom there's almost yellow yellowish brown type of streaks in the wood and it's really just striking in person Just about done with the hollowing. Just checking the thickness here and flattening out the bottom to make sure everything's looking good. And then I'll start sanding and finishing. So I got it all sanded up through 400 grit and here I'm putting on the sanding sealer. After this I'll put the abrasive paste and polishing paste, go through those steps. I'm not going to show that but wait for the end for the reveal. So here I'm just using a jam chuck and the tailstock to put pressure so that I can remove the tenon. And once I get that done, I'll sand that up and do the same finishing process on the bottom along with applying my brand. So here I'm just going to do the final clearing of the bottom and shape it up a little bit. Plus there was a little bit of tear out and rough spots on the foot of the bowl. I'm going to clean those up at the same time and sand them up and then we'll be done. Here I'm going to do the patented nub removal that I learned by watching Phil Anderson from Shady Acres Woodshop. I'll link his channel below. But I turned the lathe speed down to about 200 RPM and uh, cut it off pretty nice and clean. Sorry about the cat here on my black background here. I got a couple of new Maine Coon kittens and I didn't see all the hair in the picture until after I'd already shipped the bowl. Stay till the end to see a picture of my kitties.